All right. Thanks. So, yeah. Uh, so uh, thank you all so much for being here. My name is Dr. Brandon Brown. I serve as uh, one of the instructors for the capstone course for the interdisciplinary graduate studies program in the graduate school and global affairs de department uh, for uh, UAB. And so we're here today for Michael Horton's capstone project presentation. Um, and so if we can have the committee to introduce yourselves and then we'll pass it over to Michael to introduce himself and start with his capstone project. Uh, Dr. Daganji, if you are able to uh, unmute and, and introduce yourself. Sure. Paul Daganji, I'm a professor of information systems in the Collat School of Business. Yeah. All right. Dr. Go, if you're there, uh, if you can introduce yourself. Yes. Uh, so yeah, I'm Sam Go, uh, Associate Professor of Information Systems at the Collat School of Business. That's a good deal. So thank you also again so much for being here. Michael, if you can introduce yourselves and just uh, yeah. take us through your, your presentation. Yes, sir. Good evening, Dr. Brown, Dr. Daganji, and Dr. Go. My name is Michael Wesley Horton. I'm a graduate student at UAB. Um, I greatly appreciate the opportunity to share my work with you this evening. It's an honor to have your valuable time and attention as I present my final capstone project titled Remote Healthcare Cybersecurity, a Framework for Information Management. Thank you. For my issue and problem, I wanted to focus on examining the critical challenges during the pandemic, especially data security and information management in a remote work environment. As healthcare professionals, as end users, they transitioned to telehealth he had to navigate a wide variety of obstacles like cyber risk and potential data breaches. These issues were magnified due to the spread out nature of the healthcare workforce. For slide three, who is my targeted population? The project is gonna highlight the journey of healthcare professionals who as the end users had to pivot remote work settings. For slide four, um, I wanted to examine who are these specific people in general. Let me clarify two key terms as you see on the PowerPoint slide right here. Healthcare professionals as end users. What I mean by healthcare professionals as end users, I'm talking about doctors, nurses, or any other medical support staff who use telehealth tech, whether it's digital technology like computers or phones, to provide care, handle patient information, as well as stay connected. They're really the actual users of the technology in their day-to-day -day work, as well as everyday lives. Why healthcare professionals is end users? Again, healthcare professionals became a vital part for the study because they had to switch to telehealth quickly during the pandemic. They now use a lot of online tools, which raise issues about protecting patient data. The study is gonna focus on making telehealth safer and more effective for remote healthcare professionals. What is my purpose of this capstone project? For me, the capstone project is gonna to aim to build a system for telehealth that not only strengthens cybersecurity and improve the handling of information, but also customizing for healthcare professionals who were the end users in general. What are my con contributions to the project? First, first most, its influence was to design a tailor-made model for healthcare professionals as end users doing telehealth. S option two, the model prioritized strengthening data security and establishing a lot of comprehensive approaches to enhance remote healthcare delivery. And finally, this initiative is gonna aim to safeguard cyber threats and minimize data breach risk. What were my results in this capstone project? Firstly, the literature review is going to pinpoint two notable areas, cybersecurity and telehealth, as well as human aspects of telehealth security. These topics will highlight how people and technology work together to keep telehealth services safe and secure, as you can see on my slide right here. As stated, two notable areas stood out in the literature re research that I did. The problems with keeping telehealth safe from cyber attacks and how human errors made telehealth less secure. When healthcare moved online because of the pandemic and COVID-19, 
It showed how easily private information could get stolen and connections could be unsafe. Healthcare workers as end users, they had to deal with weak security as well as older systems, which showed that better computer management was needed. Since telehealth is now a big part of healthcare, it's vital to have a strong security and keep patient details private and secure. Also, people can make mistakes that risk security, so there is a significant need for better training and advocating artificial intelligence to make things safer. What were the key takeaway points from the literature research? As you can see on my slide presentation, the need for a comprehensive approach, adaptability in IT, clear IT standards, and ethical cybersecurity and IT practices were my four main points I wanted to highlight. Research revealed and focused on a comprehensive, holistic approach to overall cybersecurity and telehealth. It's going to combine technical solutions with understanding human behavior, highlighting telehealth professionals' crucial role in data management. The project acknowledged the need for continuous education and adaptability in IT to address emerging cyber threats. It pointed out the value of teamwork across different fields to create all-encompassing cybersecurity plan. And the project also is going to underline the need for clear IT guidelines and the development of simple, secure ways of accessing data. Lastly, I wanted to reinforce a solid commitment to cybersecurity and ethical IT practices, as you can read on my slide, ensuring the protection and responsible use of sensitive information. How will I implement key takeaway points? As I advance in my career, I aim to apply insights learned from my capstone project, which including focusing on technical skills, adaptability, value in teamwork and collaboration, as well as communicating clearly and effectively with IT leaders and staff. I'm also going to uphold ethical practices in IT and cybersecurity management. The objectives outlined in my capstone project, what I wanted to achieve, Firstly, I wanted to create a detailed framework and highlight the Remote Healthcare Cybersecurity Nexus Framework, or RHCN, as well as another framework called the Least Privileged Access Policy, also known as the Minimum Access Policy, to tackle the challenges in telehealth, focusing on cybersecurity and complex information handling. The RHCN framework is considered both a technological solution and human behavior to enhance the safety and effectiveness of remote healthcare. The other framework I wanted to highlight in my project was called the Least Privileged Policy or Minimum Access Policy. And pretty much this ensures that telehealth professionals have proper system access, strengthening data security, minimizing the risk of, bre risk of bre bre breaches, and ensuring adherence to healthcare regulations, and also providing access to users as in particular roles whenever they need it and not giving them other accesses when they don't need it as well. My deliverables I wanted to focus on as stated earlier in the previous slide were the Remote Healthcare Cybersecurity Nexus or RHCN policy framework, as well as the minimum access policy for telehealth professionals and end users. The reasons why I chose these specific deliverables I wanted to develop a framework called the Remote Healthcare Cybersecurity Nexus, or RHCN in short. I wanted to complete a plan to keep patient information safe and manage it well for telehealth workers. The minimum access policy combines solid tech with good understanding of telehealth workers' needs with everyone watching for security risks. In addition, practices could change when rules or threats change as well. The development of the, of the RHCN framework, I integrated the literature review key concepts from Burrell, Morrow, and Gorgasol proposed within the cybersecurity framework to ensure the approach covered everything needed to keep things secure and efficient when compromising five linked dimensions. Firstly, the holistic strategy encompassing the whole system, the secure ecosystem, the human-centric training focusing on human or worker training, as well as adaptive compliance and collective vigilance. The holistic strategy, as I stated earlier, incorporated these concepts to establish a secure system resilient to cyber threats. 
This ecosystem was built on human-centered training, recognizing the importance of educating a lot of telehealth workers and professionals to understand and mitigate cybersecurity risks. My framework adapted adaptive compliance measures, ensuring that as regulations evolved, I wanted the policies or practices to remain in strict accordance, particularly with the complexities of the healthcare law, such as HIPAA. For the collective vigilance was another cornerstone of my RHC and framework. This approach focused on fostering a culture where every member of the telehealth ecosystem or system in general will participate in cybersecurity, thereby enhancing the overall security posture. I also, in my project, as stated in, in the capstone project, I wanted to integrate something called the McCumber's Cube, which is pretty much like a matrix, which helped me look at patient data security from all angles, ensuring it's confidential, correct, and available when needed. And the confidentiality, integrity, and availability are the three pillars of cybersecurity. This meant no matter what the data is or what's happening, we're taking care of it in a way that fits the telehealth world perfectly. And the McCumber's cube or matrix was instrumental in our framework because it provided, as I stated before, a three-dimensional model that encapsulates the essential aspects of information security. And each point on the cube represents a state of data, whether at rest, whether at transit, or whether in process, and guides how we supply security controls in telehealth, focusing on availability, confidentiality, and integrity. For the access minimum policy for telehealth professionals. I recognize it stated in my first part of the slide here um, that human error was significantly a sub cybersecurity risk as Aaron Morrow stated in 2020. The insight led to me to create a stringent access minimum policy for healthcare professionals as end users in the telehealth remote environment. With cyber threats constantly evolving, as Gorgasol stated in my um, capstone project. In 2021, I realized the policy needed to go beyond the basics. In following Burrell's advice in 2023, I wanted to layer three security measures to cover every aspect of telehealth operations. This meant setting rules, adapting them as new threats emerge, and ensuring everyone involved in the telehealth understood their role in protecting patient information. And for my access minimum policy, it was a living document that could grow with the challenges, especially in telehealth cybersecurity. The first point I wanted to point out for the access minimum policy, the rules are made, who can see patient data, um, how to log in more securely, how to communicate without exposing sensitive information, um, as well as every telehealth worker and doctor, for example, had to use secure logins as well as encrypted information to log in more securely. Also, they had to protect their devices against any viruses and hackers. And if they saw anything suspicious, they had to report it right away. And also for the human, human side of it, for proper training and accordance, train everyone to stay sharp on security and check regularly to ensure everyone follows the rules. If they didn't, they could face serious consequences. As you know, in cybersecurity, humans are the weakest link in a system. So it's always good to have proper training for users in the system to be aware of these threats. How will this relate to my field or career going forward? Well, the project is a blessing. It bridges the gap between theory and practice in cybersecurity, as well as for the information technology field. The project allowed me to enhance my understanding of the connection between cybersecurity and information technology, as you can see on my PowerPoint presentation slide. It also improved my skills for leading as well as innovating in the face of complex cyber threats in, in general. And I wanted the project to stress the importance of a lot of the times integrating cybersecurity measures into IT management as well. The project also taught me to be adaptable and committed to continual learning as well as being vital in the fast evolving tech world and cybersecurity sectors. These lessons were practical for my role in information technology Preparing me, preparing me to meet the challenges head on and tackle them firsthand. I want to share my findings with a broader audience by presenting them at conferences, also at workshops, possibly publishing them in journals and using digital platforms to connect those in telehealth and cybersecurity. In addition, from a project, 
I also would like to partner with healthcare organizations to bring the RHCN policy framework to life through workshops, training, as well as webinars. And this also will help IT management strengthen data security more effectively, creating better response strategies for telehealth providers. And how is this being relevant to my, for example, the literature review? Um, like I said, guided by the experts like Gorkasaw in 2021 and Burrell in 2023, they wove cybersecurity practices in the fabric of IT management and the integration is a growing trend in the industry. As I stated before in the project, Aaron Morrow, he was a big factor um, and helpful in highlighting the need for IT professionals, as well as being agile and ready to adapt to new cybersecurity threats as they emerge. And the project reflected the need for being adaptable. Furthermore, it focused on ethical data management, which is crucial to handling sensitive information, especially in healthcare, aligning with the current literature, emphasizing the responsible use of data in IT operations. So for connecting to my interdisciplinary connection relating to my graduate studies, in the capstone project, I wanted to showcase my skill in interdisciplinary research, which is a vital part of my degree plan. I hone my data analysis and synthesis abilities, boosting my research skills on the capstone project. And the project in whole, it deepened my understanding in the fields of cybersecurity and healthcare information technology aligning well with the cybersecurity and IT management objectives. I wanted to develop skills that prepare me to advance my roles and leadership positions in cybersecurity and IT management and my ability to adapt to changes and commit to continuous learning to be essential for professional growth in IT. So for recommendations, as you can see, um, approaching the cybersecurity research was an integral um, part in integrating expertise with human, legal, and ethical considerations. Keeping abreast of technological advancements and trends in cybersecurity is crucial. Emphasizing the importance of collaboration, as seen in my PowerPoint slide, bringing together diverse perspectives from law, ethics, and management. And a key area of investigation is the impact of artificial intelligence, which is a big factor today in today's society and machine learning on cybersecurity, particularly in telehealth. Also, I wanted to understand the role of human behavior and psychology, which is vital in shaping cybersecurity best practices. Policies and training programs must be adaptable and thorough, and also strive to foster a critical, innovative cybersecurity and IT management thinking culture. In conclusion, the Capstone Project demonstrated my competence in cybersecurity and information technology management. It signified my completion of my academic pursuits and the continuation of an exciting professional journey. I look forward to continuing this journey in the future, equipped with understanding and practical experience. I am prepared to contribute actively to cybersecurity and IT management, and this endeavor extended beyond academic achievement. I wanted to strive towards meaningful contributions in these rapidly progressing areas. This concludes my presentation and thank you. Any questions? Uh, Dr. Deganji and Dr. Goa, we can open it for questions or feedback that you will have and I'll wrap up here. So uh, just two things real quickly uh, that come to mind looking at your draft as well as uh, listening to the presentation tonight. First of all, thank you for uh, presenting your work. Uh, you've done a great deal of work here. Uh, mm -hmm. I enjoyed reading through the documents and the deliverables. Mm -hmm. So the first question that I have is when it comes to telehealth, I know this may be a little bit outside of the scope. I was just thinking about this because I actually have an appointment uh, mm -hmm. with my physician tomorrow mm -hmm. and I asked to convert it to a telehealth uh, appointment because obviously I'm not in town, right? Uh, right? The first question they had was, are you in the state of Alabama? And I know that's cold wink wink, right? For, uh, <laughs> yes, you have to say you're in the state of Alabama, otherwise we can't do a telehealth appointment. I was curious, like, um, when you looked at this, do mm -hmm. you guys have any requirements? Or were you aware of any legal regulatory requirements about what states you can offer this in, how that impacts security, for example, you have to be physically located, so on and so forth. Well, 
because of the pandemic, as you stated before, uh, everything is digitized now. So a lot of times um, people don't meet first time with the doctors as they, as they used to um, before the pandemic, it, it changed everything. But um, each state is different in how they govern their laws and regulations. But for me um, personally, um, it depends on the legal aspects like the state you're in, like I'm located in Augusta, Georgia. So my state laws will be different from, say, for example, the state laws in Alabama, but particularly everything pretty much ties to the same thing. As long as the, um, like the clients can meet firsthand with the doctors, they have firsthand in exchange, firsthand information with medical information, um, any medicines or any sickness such as that visiting the doctor. So a lot of the times depends on the state as I said before, each state is different in how they regulate um, medical information regarding um, customer or patient information. So it really depends on that personally. But um, when I wrote this project, I thought of it from like, because um, Georgia, we have a lot of stricter guidelines and who can access certain information in telehealth. You have to be a resident of the state of Georgia and to have a licensed telehealth professional reach out and contact you. Um, I don't know about the laws in Alabama. They could be different in Georgia, but um, it just depends on the different state laws and regulations that play a factor into that. Good question. Yeah, that, that's just what I was trying to bring up was that I wonder if the your framework should kind of take into account uh, geography, right? Since gotcha. we're really kind of dispersed. Um, and then just my second point real, real quickly, and I'll turn it over to Dr. Deganji. Mm -hmm. um, I think like with any sort of security policy that is developed, uh, there's always something on the back end, which is compliance, right? Uh, right. The extent to which, uh, you know, the individuals are actually uh, using the policy. I want to frame this uh, with this an example. So mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Deganji and I both went to uh, Florida State. And so uh, at the beginning of uh, COVID, uh, Florida State actually caught a lot of flack because everyone was working from home, mm -hmm. but they actually required that if you have kids, uh, you have to show that you've got a nanny, they're at daycare or something, right? And they're being monitored. Mm -hmm. So you're only doing work stuff uh, rather than, you know, also doing like home stuff, you know, and stuff like that, right? right. So uh, I was curious, like, have you ever thought about like, you've created this plan, right? But how does that working from home, that erosion of boundaries, right? How does that really kind of impact compliance and how can you potentially monitor, right? Are people doing what they're doing? You know, it's different for us having this meeting of the other people maybe sitting in the hotel room, right? But it's really different if you're at home doing a consultation, right? And other people in your household are walking in and out, can hear it, right? So I, mm -hmm. I was curious if you thought about that aspect. So a lot of times I thought I did think about that. So um, like, for example, if you work at a company, for example, um, we have like, a, for example, re remote workers in different companies today, they have remote issue laptops and remote issue devices, bring your own devices, for example. So a lot of the times, for example, um, they can monitor what applications you can use when you're working in a, um, for example, on your job, it could be in the telehealth environment. A lot of geofencing applications can be in place to keep monitor and track of where users are at at different locations, as well as what they're doing. You can have um, monitoring software, which I'm assuming a lot of companies today use. For example, um, if you're working at a company and you're browsing Amazon or looking on, for example, Netflix, they can easily monitor that with monitoring software. So the same thing I think could be applied to telehealth as well as if you're working in a different location, you can have geofencing software in place to monitor and track where the uh, patients are as well as if you're in the state of Georgia, Alabama, et cetera, where you're at. And that could be a factor into keeping compliance safe and secure as well as also um, being more secure and stringent and like having these patients be at these particular lo location at a certain time. So I would say like geofencing software or monitoring software can be 
beneficial in keeping compliances um, in tracking in line, especially in the telehealth remote environment. Yeah, maybe just as a suggestion, uh, the policy should consider what constitutes a secure work environment from the telehealth care worker's perspective. Gotcha. Right? Uh -huh. Like, you know, got to be in a room, not say soundproof, but you have to be aware of what interruptions you might have from where right. you're working. Right. Thank you. Um, overall, I think you did a very good job. Congratulations on a great presentation. Um, I think you did a very good alignment with the McCumbers Cube uh, for data at rest, data in motion, and data being processed. Yep. I think you had the right depth for administrative controls as well as your logical controls. So I think that was good. Obviously, physical security is something that's important, but in this environment, it's going to be the toughest one to figure out how you create that standard. So you uh -huh. might want to have a little bit more attention to that component, given the fact that you might have people working from home. Gotcha. Uh, but honestly, I think that's a minor component that you would have to do since most data would be electronically stored. So it's simply managed by most logical controls. So you could probably get around that by simply pointing to the encryption and the and that that part. And also uh, in the project, Dr. Deganji, like the artificial intelligence, I wanted everything popular now with AI. So AI mm -hmm. can be used also for encryption. I was thinking about that factor also. Yep. So I think, uh, you know, I, I believe you had MDM in there as well. Mm -hmm. So I, I think I remember seeing mobile device management. So I think that would also probably get around some of the things Sam was talking about uh, okay. in terms of physical location of data. Like I know he was more focused on the patient side, but mm -hmm. fundamentally, I think uh, many of that, many of those things are insurance driven for where the person has to be for the telehealth <laughs> as yeah. opposed to HIPAA compliance. I know there's some state laws about it, but largely the state laws are trying to avoid that fight, I think, because insurance is got a pretty good amount of influence on how they write their laws there. Um, so I, don't, I, I think that uh, overall you did an excellent job. I don't really have any Thank questions you. for you. Thank you. And that was mostly, I think when y'all talk about risk here, that's where I was coming in, um, in, in regards to my questions. Like one of my main ones was, what do you see? Are the guess the biggest pitfalls from the model that you created? But you're talking about, you know, you all have discussed that already. So I don't want to really re ask that question. You just mentioned my second one with, about AI and this kind of integration and all of this. Yes. Uh -huh. um, do you have more to add there? Because, I mean, like you said, it's it's become popular or I guess more popular or more prevalent, you know, in the last uh, year, a couple of years. But, you know, do you have more there to add in regards to, you know, how do you how do you believe that? this phenomenon is what I'm gonna call it of AI or integrated within your particular model. So like AI is very popular like now, <clears throat> especially um, with a lot of the times, you, for example, in a scenario, you have weak encryption protocols that are mm -hmm. still being used where AI can find the latest model in encryption to protect patient data as well as information so that's what I wanted to highlight in my pot in my project on a conceptual level. But um, going forward, I think AI can be an easier standard, um, especially when terms in terms of encryption protocols and protecting data, because a lot of times um, a lot of companies still use, you'd be surprised, use weak encryption protocols, and that could cause a lot of patient information to be at risk, mm -hmm. uh, or also be at loss, possibly, but I, for me personally, I like AI because um, it's an easier thing when in terms of encryption. Um, but you also have to have safe regulation in terms of AI because um, a lot of the times it's going so popular and we can't contain it going forward. We probably have to have safer laws and regulations to um, control and try to mitigate it if it keeps going too large. But so far, if we have regulations and policies in place, it shouldn't be a problem um, as a useful tool in the future. Okay. Uh, you talked a little bit earlier about one of the components is this cross-disciplinary collaboration piece. 
uh, you know, across di across disciplinary collaboration across fields is what you mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, were there certain fields that you, you know, you want to, I guess, highlight here? Well, most importantly, uh, I was talking about healthcare management, okay. information technology, and cybersecurity. That's what I was meaning okay. by that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I didn't know if it's it was just a fancy, just a fancy word <laughs> I wanted to use. No, 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 that's all right. I just didn't want to. I didn't know if he was like <laughs> integrating or trying to integrate you know, other entities that can either partner uh, or uh, that we should be aware about, uh, you know, should be aware in regards to your, ne this necessary approach uh, mm -hmm. to cybersecurity and information tech. So oh, it was just um, healthcare, management, IT, and cybersecurity. Yes, sir. Okay. 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 Um, overall, yeah, like, you know, what Dr. Deganji said and Dr. Go said, I mean, overall, really good job here. Um, I do want to ask um, of both of your committee members, is there any room, uh, any things that you all want to see improvement-wise or things that we need to change or add to Michael's project? I would. We would typically go out and kind of discuss and come back, but nobody is here, so I just kind of want to open it up. Is there any anything we want to see different or changed or updated? I'm fine with the current draft. Okay. Dr. Yes, I'm good with it too. Just, you know, be thinking if you want to continue this on in the future, right? Yes, Physical sir. controls as, you know, what we've talked about. Just be thinking about that, yeah. Okay. Physical controls. Okay. Well, 